Valve just announced their latest endeavor into the PC gaming marketplace with their Steam Deck, a portable handheld device featuring a custom AMD APU. Marketed with various amounts of storage and storage speed, it's meant to meet a few different price points, but all of them should perform relatively the same in gaming. But what I'm concerned with today is the performance of the device, featuring a four core, eight thread Zen 2 CPU and a eight core RDNA 2 GPU, 16 gigabytes of LP DDR5 running at 5,500 megatransfers a second. But all of this should perform pretty well considering it's only using an 800p screen, so that's a 1200 by 800 screen, which is kind of an odd resolution if you ask me, in my opinion with the hardware that it has, it should perform very well. So today I wanted to take a look at its actual performance by kind of replicating its uh, performance by the numbers. So they're saying it has a 450 gigaflops of processing power and 1.6 teraflops of GPU power. So I think with the system that I have set up here, we should get relatively close to give us an idea of what kind of performance this thing should be capable of. So here we have a Ryzen 3 3100, that is four core, eight threads. 16 gigabytes of the fastest DDR4 that I have, along with a Radeon RX 5500 XT that will be dawn clocking the snot out of to get it to match the performance of the Steam Deck. Now, obviously this is not going to be an exact measurement. Comparing between two different architectures of GPU just by uh, teraflops is not always an exact measurement, but it should give us relatively a close idea as to the performance of the Steam Deck. So here we are in the BIOS. I'm just gonna go ahead and set the RAM at XMP. So. We're just gonna look at XMP profile one, and then we're just gonna set it at 36 because the CPU starts to get kind of unstable at uh, 3,800 megahertz. And then I'm gonna set the CPU core ratio to 34 to try to match that, uh, that 450 gigaflops of uh, CPU power. Now, obviously we are using Windows, but the custom Steam OS uh, version of Linux that the Steam Deck will be running should have a little bit less baggage. So our 5500 XT has 22 compute units where the Steam Deck is supposed to have eight. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna underclock the crap out of it to try to meet that 1.6 teraflops that the Steam Deck has. So once in the AMD software, we're gonna go up to the performance tab. We're just gonna go over to the tuning tab on performance, go to manual, and then we're just gonna set the GPU tuning to the absolute bare minimum max. We're gonna apply those changes. Then we're gonna go ahead and load up Ada64 Extreme and use the GP GPU benchmark to see if we're in relatively the realm of what the Steam Deck advertises its performance as. So we're just gonna run this benchmark and see what our single precision flops are. And I feel like that's gonna be pretty close. I mean, obviously, and I cannot stress this enough because somebody in the comments is gonna tell me about how flops don't matter. They have a relative performance. Like we're not exact here. And I know for a fact that we're not gonna be exact here but the relative performance of the flops give us an idea of how this thing should perform. So our single precision flops of the 5500 XT running at the absolute bare minimum is uh, 1600 gigaflops or 1.6 teraflops. So we are pretty close to that Steam Deck. So the CPU scored 434 uh, gigaflops. So very close to the, the four core eight thread processor that is in the Steam Deck. Honestly, this should be very close, but again, we're comparing different architectures, albeit RDNA 1 and RDNA 2 architectures aren't that far apart, so they should be fairly similar scaling, but again, we cannot hold performance numbers specifically to the flops, but I just, I'm gonna say it 10 times because I'm still gonna get a comment over it. So let's just go ahead and load up Shadow of the Benchmark, the only benchmark anybody ever cares about. So Shadow of the Tomb Raider is about three to four years old at this point. It's probably the perfect title to play on your new Steam Deck because you know it's a slightly older title. It's not quite as demanding as it used to be as far as like, you know, hardware of the times. So we're just gonna go ahead and run it at uh, 720p because for whatever reason they chose 1280 by 800 for the, the Steam Deck, and I don't believe that a lot of games have that resolution. Like, it's not a very common resolution, so I can see you having letterboxing in a lot of games. <laughs> Obviously, 720p will work on a 800p screen, but it's just kind of weird that they chose that. Just go ahead and run the benchmark all lowest, just to give us an idea of where the CPU sits. It looks to me like it's doing a very good job of staying above 70 FPS, which with a 60 Hertz display, that should be 
perfectly good. Now the game is running at all low settings, so it's probably not how the developers intended the game to be played, but it is very playable. Now, I have no idea how the thermals are gonna look on the Steam Deck, and I don't know how that's going to affect how the device is going to throttle uh, with heat loads. It's only gonna be a 15 to like 30 watt part, so it's not gonna have huge power consumption, but that kind of power in your hands can still get pretty toasty, especially when they're only using what looks like the same cooler out of a Nintendo Switch. And also, did you see how many buttons are on that thing? I think there's like 20 buttons on that thing. Like, holy crap. I can hardly remember like four different keys on my keyboard, much less 20 buttons on my, my handheld. I think the sweet spot for this game would be all medium settings. I uh, ran the benchmark before shooting this video and got a pretty good, I think it was like a, a high 50s, low 60s average in medium settings. So I feel like that would be the sweet spot for the, uh, the Steam Deck when it comes out. Next up, let's just hop into Doom. Now this game is very well optimized and should pull well over 100 FPS on the hardware that we have here, running it even at the speeds that we have it down clock to. Now this is Doom 2016, so not quite as demanding as Doom Eternal, but the games are both very well optimized. Doom Eternal might perform a little worse, but it's not that far worse. Shoot, in the picture of the demo, in the picture of the announcement, they actually have Doom Eternal running or at least it looks like they have Doom Eternal installed on the device. So if that was a target to play that game, this should play perfectly. So what do we have this set at? We have it set at uh, 720p again. Very weird resolution that they have set up on the actual device, but uh, just check our advanced settings. It looks like we're on all ultra settings. So let's see how it performs. Yeah, from what I can tell, it's playing at uh, well over 100 FPS. So yeah, that plays pretty well, but what about Todd Howard selling you another copy of Skyrim? How does Skyrim run? Do I even need to run Skyrim? Honestly, I think it's going to run 60 FPS just fine. <laughs> In fact, let's just go ahead and run Fallout 4 because it's just Skyrim with extra steps and uh, radiation. I feel like a huge selling point of this device will be able to uh, roam the wasteland at uh, 60 Hertz. Now all these settings are completely maxed out at uh, 720p. So. Close to that 800p again. It's just such a weird, such a weird resolution. I don't know why they picked that resolution. I'm sure it'll all make sense when it, the product releases and like there'll be some like turning point in my head will be like, oh, this all makes sense. But for right now, it just seems odd. So at completely maxed out settings, Fallout uh, 4 runs at a pretty solid 40 to, uh, to, to 60 FPS. I mean, I haven't seen 60 FPS yet, but uh, we're just hovering around that 50 FPS mark. So Fallout 4 looks pretty good move on to another title. Let's go to the worst title. Let's go to Cyberpunk. Now the Steam Deck is supposed to have 64 gigabytes of onboard storage for the cheapest optioned model. So that's uh, $400 for the cheapest model. It only comes with 64 gigabytes of uh, storage again, and then more storage. It's faster storage, but it's also more storage costs more. But I want to see when, when it comes out personally is if you can expand that storage by yourself. Anyway, let's try out Cyberpunk. So in the settings, we have everything set to all low, and uh, I'm just gonna set the resolution scaling to uh, to off. So we're just gonna be native 720p with, uh, I guess I'm gonna turn down crowd density because I wanna give this the best shot of looking pretty good. So I am in a marketplace type area, so there is people, so it's not just out in the open where there's no models on the screen giving us a uh, unrealistically high frame rate. So in Cyberpunk at 720p, we're looking at a, uh, a pretty solid 40 FPS. Uh, like obviously we could turn on fidelity uh, cast scaling, which just uh, turns down the resolution that it's naturally rendered at, but uh, this doesn't look too bad. Now, I'm sure if I start doing stuff, we might start seeing frames to dip down into like the 20s because of how like demanding this game can just randomly be. It doesn't really feel that bad. Like it's not stuttery. Now, obviously because we're working with more CUs running at a, a lower clock speed, that might be smoothing out the experience where with the Steam Deck having less uh, CUs, like compute units for the, uh, the, the GPU, we might see more stutters going on because of how it has less processors to work with. But overall, this doesn't look too bad. Let's go ahead and load up uh, Grand Theft Auto 5 because you know that's a popular title and it's going to continue to be a popular title for probably as long as the Steam Deck is relevant. <laughs> it's been a popular title for longer than a lot of GPUs have been relevant. 
So in Grand Theft Auto V, we're running it at 720p with our, you know, hardware turned down to the, the Steam Decks, and it looks like we're getting just about 100 FPS, which honestly is pretty good. <laughs> I don't know what my settings are set at. I think they're set at all high. This game isn't too demanding for uh, modern hardware. Obviously, it's getting to be like 10 years old at this point, so no surprises that it's getting to be like Doom, which will run on anything. Honestly, the game runs really good. Let's just go ahead and uh, run the benchmark and close this one out. So from what I can see here, the Steam Deck looks very promising. Because of its native resolution only being about 800p and running at about 60 hertz, all you really need is this kind of lower end hardware. Granted, the hardware that I'm using here is far better than the hardware that's coming in that uh, Steam Deck, but with it turned down to relative performance numbers that are matching the Steam Decks, it looks very promising. And I hope I can get my hands on a Steam Deck on launch. I don't know if it'll be a possibility for me at the time, but if I can, I will definitely look into doing things like liquid metal on one or adding a NVMe SSD to it or maybe, you know, booting Windows on it and trying some random VR nonsense. So if you want that, if you want to look forward to that, get subscribed, leave a comment on uh, what you think about this video. If you think that my uh, testing methodology is garbage, I already know it's not the, the greatest uh, way of comparing parts, but it is a fairly good idea like it gives us a rough idea and I really hope that that it will be accurate enough for us to look forward to this new product from Valve like this video you know get subscribed ring the bell like always guys I'll see you next time